praise the name of Jesus and one of the things we're praising him for is victory and this is part two of a study of Psalm 18 and the first study we looked at a powerful messianic prophecy of God rescuing Jesus and pulling him out of the powers of hell and boy if you didn't if you didn't go over that with us go back and do that it's it's victory but we also want to talk about victory in spiritual warfare today because David wrote this psalm, as you'll see in the heading, if you read the heading in your Bible, David wrote this psalm on the occasion of his victory over his enemies and over Saul. Now here's what most scholars believe, that after the death of Saul in battle, David was made king over part of Israel. But then there were several years of fighting between the house of David and the house of Saul. It was like a civil war in the nation of Israel. And then at the conclusion of that war, when it was firmly decided that David would be the king over all, that's when many people believe this psalm was written. Now I want to point out something before we read the whole thing and, and before we sing also, that David refers to his own innocence here. In verses 20 through 24, he said, You rewarded me according to my innocence. Now, in a sense, only Christ is innocent. But if you recall the event in David's life where he could have killed Saul, he could have taken it in his own, own hands twice. He could have killed Saul. And he said, no, it's hands off. The Lord's going to deal with this. I'm not going to do this. I believe that's what those verses are in reference to. He's not saying my entire life was innocent. But in terms of how I came to power, I was innocent. I did not touch God's anointed. I put that in the hands of God. And so this, this passage actually, not only is, is it messianic, but it's going to teach us how we are equipped for spiritual warfare. And we're going to look at it from that perspective today. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, read these verses. And It's a longer passage, so go ahead and, and get ready to listen along, read along if you have a Bible in front of you. We'll start with verse 25, right after David declares his innocence. And he's going to talk about how God not only trained him, but God then enabled him to win victory. And we're going to apply this to our spiritual victory today. Amen. Psalm 18, verse 25, with the merciful... With the merciful you will show yourself merciful. With a blameless man you will show yourself blameless. With the pure you will show yourself pure. And with the devious you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will lighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again until they were destroyed. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt in the streets. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The foreigners submit to me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges me and subdues the people under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. 
Therefore I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. Great deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forevermore. Amen. Well, this is David's victory. But notice you also could see in verses 43 through 45 how that would apply to Christ too, that people hear of him and obey him and even foreigners bow down to him. And, and many have seen, as it's quoted in Romans chapter 15, this passage is quoted in Romans chapter 15 about through Christ, God saving the Gentiles. So here again, David is talking on two levels, his own personal life, but then messianically also. But let's talk today about David's personal life. Now, if you read 2 Samuel 22, it's talking about the end of David's life and a summary of his great accomplishments. And this psalm is written, uh, repeated there almost word for word. And that tells us something. David wrote this psalm early on in his life as the king, but he would re-sing it over and over and over. And you know, that's scriptural. In, in Exodus chapter 15, they sang that song of their victory over Egypt, the horse and the rider thrown into the sea. And in Revelation chapter 15, they sing the song of the Lord and the Lamb's victory over and over. So I just want to ask you, do you have a song of victory that you sing over and over? Has God won some victories in your heart and from time to time you just start singing about it again? I hope so. That's what happened here uh, with David, this song of victory. Now, in verses 1 through 3, let's just summarize. God is many things to David. Listen to this summary. We sang part of it. He is a rock. He's David's strength. He's David's fortress. He's David's deliverer. He's David's shield. He's David's horn of salvation. He is the God of my salvation. In verse 2, he's a strong tower. Uh, in verse 18, he is my support. The, that's the foundation of David's victory is who God is to him. So who is God to you? Do you know him as your rock? Do you know him as your salvation? Do you know him as your deliverer? David's confidence is in who the Lord is. And so boy, if you haven't done it already, spend some time meditating on the first three verses of this psalm. Who is the Lord? My God, my strength, my shield, my deliverer, my support. In another place, he says, you light my darkness. You're, you're the one who lights up those dark areas and dark times. Well, I want to divide this into two sections. Number one, there are times in spiritual warfare, we're going to talk about spiritual warfare now, where it is what I'm going to call hands off. In other words, you can't fight that. You just got to have your hands off. Uh, David, when it came to his relationship with Saul, it was hands off. I have a chance to kill him. He's treating me like an enemy. He's got 3,000 of the best troops out to kill me. Here he is right at my feet. I could stab him. I could end it all. But no, it's going to be hands off. There are times when God doesn't want you fighting some things. It's just hands off. And it takes discernment to know when it's hands off. Remember, Jehoshaphat was surrounded by a mighty army in 2 Chronicles 20. And the Lord said, no, you're not going to have to fight this one. And when you go out with praise... It says the Lord brought the victory. He didn't actually go out there with sword. It was with praise and with worship. How about Hezekiah and the Syrians? They were surrounded, but Hezekiah didn't send his troops out to fight. They prayed, and the Lord sent an angel and destroyed the enemy. It was hands off. So I asked the Lord, Lord, is this a hands off or a hands on battle that I'm engaged in? Because there are other times when he wants you to go do something. When you've got to go say something, or you've got to go do something. But there are times when it is hands off. And when David declared his innocence, it was in that regard that I kept my hands off from touching the Lord's anointing. I was innocent from touching Saul. God did it. I stayed out of it. And it takes wisdom and the voice of the Lord and His discernment in our life to know when we just simply have to surrender a battle to the Lord and say, this is one of those hands off battles. Now, I've asked Nicole to get ready to read Psalm 149. As, as a worship leader, maybe you see this a little differently than many would. But would you read Psalm 149? And it talks about how praise can actually produce a victory. Do you have Psalm 149 there? Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. 
Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged two -edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Wow, did you catch that? That somehow praise can have a binding effect on, now that translated the word kings, but could it be that there are principalities and powers, spiritual entities, and our praise can actually bind them, put chains on them. Sometimes you're in a spiritual battle, but it's what we're calling hands off. And all you can do is praise and worship. And that praise and that worship actually has a binding effect on those spiritual principalities and powers. Nicole, as a worshiper, you're not only a worship leader, but you're personally our worshiper. Have you experienced how worship and praise has brought a victory? Yes, there have been a couple different moments in life have just kind of sprung out in mind as I've thought of this. And just remembering where you've hit that wall emotionally and, and there's almost a sense of like, I don't know how I'm going to mentally process through this situation. But the desire to sing or play or, or to worship or have the music on, it comes. And at first it seems like, oh, I can't even enter into this. But there is such a moving that has happened in the points of my life where I know God worked because of worshiping him the focus was no longer on my mind or how I was feeling but putting that toward him and then the breakthroughs that he brought about or the answer he brought or just the peace that entered in yeah and it was so tangible and they're they're very specific moments that I will not forget because it was worship generated it became it came because of that so you've experienced in a sense Psalm 149 where you were yes. praising the Lord and something changed in that situation yes Yes. Now, how do you know if it's a hands-on or a hands-off battle you're to fight? Well, I would simply say this as a practical suggestion. Start with hands-off. Mm -hmm. Start with just praising the Lord. Start with just worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. To say, I feel like I'm under attack, but Lord, I'm going to worship you. Mm -hmm. I feel like the enemy is against me. I don't know what to do, so I'm going to praise you. Yes. And then let the Lord guide you from there. And so there are times where there are hands-off. So let's take a moment right now, and let's just sing that song again. And let our praise fight a battle for us. And it's a hands-off right now. We're just going to praise and worship the Lord. And then next we're going to look at, okay, what do we do if it's a hands-on spiritual warfare? Let's just sing this again under the Lord. Praise the name. somehow involved in spiritual warfare or under attack, start with praise and worship. Yes. And sometimes it's a hands-off kind of uh, issue and the, the victory will be won before you have to do anything. That, that can happen. But I want you to notice two things. In the rest of this psalm, David talks about God training or I'm going to use the phrase empowering him. Let me just highlight these verses. Verse 29. Notice he says, For by you I can run against the troop. Uh, and, and by my God, I can leap over a wall. Verse 32, it is God who arms me with strength. Verse 33, and it makes my way perfect. Verse 33, he makes my feet like hinds, uh, like the feet of a deer, and he sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my paths under me so my feet did not slip. Look at verse 39. You have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. In verse 40, you have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. 
That's a, a picture of the king literally standing on the necks of his in, enemies in victory. Verse 43, you have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations of people I have not known will serve me. Verse 47, it is God who avenges me and subdues all people under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violence, from the violent men. Notice in all those verses, he's saying, God, you did it. You did it. You did it. You gave me strength. Well, what do you do with that strength? You armed my war. You trained my hands for war. There were times in David's life where he has hands off. He didn't do anything to Saul. But there were other times when he was hands on. Where he had to fight the Philistines. Where his troops did go out against the house of Saul. And those were hands on. And then notice how he feels empowered when he acted upon it in verse 37. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back till they were destroyed. So he had to go do something. That's verse 37. Verse 38. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. The last part of verse 40. So that I destroyed those who hated me. Well, you said God did. Yeah, but I had to get involved. This was a hands-on battle. And then in verse 42. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt in the streets. <laughs> That's one of those verses in the Bible that, whoa, I beat them as dust in the wind. So notice he's saying both, God, you enabled me, you empowered me, but then he had to go out and do something. So this is uh, what I'm calling hands-on. Uh, kind of like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, Lorraine, you had a couple of verses there about spiritual warfare, and then I had a couple of questions if you're ready. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about this hands-on, hands-off kind of thing. So uh, what, are, what are those verses you had on spiritual warfare? I have a... Uh... 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 5. Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Wow, now what do you suppose it says weapons of our warfare are not carnal? But their mind. What would a couple of those weapons be in your in your mind? Um, prayer and supplication and the word and fellowship and um, just praying and the word, seeking the Lord. So in David, he said, "Lord, you equip me, you train me." How has being in Bible studies and church? How does that equip you in the Word, would you say? Oh, it's most important because there's consistency, there's faithfulness. So many people have so much potential, but they don't have faithfulness. So even though you have potential and you know the Word, and you know a little bit here and a little bit there, but you're not faithful to gather together and to learn God's Word on a regular basis and get it in every fiber of your being, that when that attack comes, you won't have what you need. So to have what you need, you need to be in Bible study, you need to be in the Word, you need to be in fellowship, you need to be in prayer, and you need to worship Him, you need to sing, you need to dance before Him if you want to be equipped for that battle. So that's a part of what David would say spiritually is training for war. Yes. That when you come to church, don't just come to church. It's good to come to church to see people. I think there's a social aspect that's healthy. But you're also coming to church to hear the Word so you can engage in spiritual warfare at times. Right. And hearing the word, how, how about when you hear the word, you get principles to live by, you get promises to hang on to. Yes. And there's conflicts, man. There's, you got to hang on to some things. You need a shield, and, and prayer can be like a weapon in, 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 in our spiritual warfare. Well, why is it that carnal weapons don't work? Ephesians gives us the answer there. You had that. Ephesians 6. Where is the real spiritual battle yes. nowadays? Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. 
Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Wow. Well, what a, what a great picture. So we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. No. Now David did, but now in New Testament time, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But our training should then be spiritual training mm -hmm. and the practical application of that. And uh, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual entities. Mm -hmm. So we must stand in the power of the Lord's might. That's why David all those times says, Lord, you did this for me. You did that for me. You did this for me. But then he says, I did this too. In other words, I did engage mm -hmm. and I did act upon what God had equipped me to do. Now, I know you love to pray. You love prayer meetings. How would you say being a part of the prayer ministry of this church has equipped you to win victories spiritually in prayer? Yeah, so I'm uh, big on praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, praying in your prayer language. That's some advantage we have over David, is that we have a prayer language. We have a language that God said, just wait in that room and it will come and it came. And if you ask for it, you can have it. And as you pray in your prayer language, the spirit knows the mind of God and the mind of man. And he will reveal to you or he will give you peace or he will give you joy through that situation. And that encourages me, it gives me direction, it tells me if I should act or not act. It's just a powerful, powerful gift that I think every Christian should ask God for. Now, I know as, as a mom and as a grandma and Nicole is a mom, I'm sure there are times when you're praying in the Spirit and you get like a burden mm -hmm. for your children or a situation. And all you can do then is start engaging in that prayer. And there are times when that prayer becomes like a wrestling match. It really is spiritual warfare. But you're not doing it in your own strength. You're, do, you're doing it in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Right. Just like David said, Lord, you trained my hands for war. Lord, you did this. But we become his partners in that battle. Mm -hmm. Well, I trust that you will get discernment as to when it is a hands-on battle for you, that you'll step out and say what needs to be said, that you'll get down on your knees and cry out to God in intercessory prayer, or maybe recruit some other people to agree with you in prayer that this yes. victory of warfare will be won. But when it's all said and done, we say, Lord, you did it. That's right. I was involved, but you did it. Just like David in Psalm uh, 18. Well, I'm going to ask Lane to close us in prayer, and then we'll sing that song one more time if Nicole would lead us. But I want to do that after we hear these verses again. Again, let's focus on who God is. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my redeemer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And then the last two verses, 49 and 50. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. Great deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forevermore. Well, David's talking about himself, but in Christ, we are like his descendants. We are all one family, the family of God. And so let's give him thanks. Thank give him thanks for the victory and give him thanks for the equipping and the training of you so that when it is a hands-on battle, you're ready to go. And you know you're a part of a body that will support you. Well, let's, let's sing this song of praise one last time. And then, Lorraine, when we're done singing, would you close us in prayer? Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. And Him will I trust. Praise the out there that one that they will seek you more father that they will seek the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues lord god that that is for them that's a tool that that's equipment that they can use pray they would put their whole armor god on lord that they would get into fellowship that they would 
uh, pray and come to church and learn and know and equip themselves so that when the battle comes and they pray and they worship, they'll know whether to act or not to act. And if they have to act, that they'll have the equipment. They'll, have, they'll be ready for battle, Lord God. And we know who wins, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you that you have overcome and help us to overcome. But we need to do our part. So I pray each one will do their part. I encourage you to do your part. Right now, if that Holy Spirit's nudging you to, to be more active in, in church or in Bible reading or in prayer, do it today. Do it now. Don't wait. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.